Welcome to Pat's Papers. I'm Pat Kiernan. Our top story today is from Washington. So why exactly is it that we have to be friends with these men? With President Obama meeting with leaders of Afghanistan and Pakistan today in Washington, the Washington Post editorial page addresses that question of these difficult friendships. The Post says the two men are broadly disliked, but says the administration must work with them because they play a central role in U.S. security. Connie Culp is America's first face transplant recipient. She stepped in front of the cameras yesterday at the Cleveland Clinic. That story in the Plain Dealer this morning. After 30 unsuccessful attempts to repair a gruesome gunshot wound that left her face marred, Culp became the fourth person in the world to receive a successful face transplant. Actor Don Valwees died yesterday at a hospital in Santa Monica. He was 75 years old. The story in the Los Angeles Times this morning, the Times and other papers say he was best known for his comedic support of Mel Brooks and Burt Reynolds in movies such as Smokey and the Bandit 2 and Cannonball Run. Some um, ingenious technology from Ford, it allows parents to remotely control the speed at which their teenagers can drive. But there's a big but on this. The company didn't want to create a safety hazard by setting too low a limit. So then there's a question of how useful this is. The Chicago Tribune says the lowest programmable speed is 80 miles an hour. A Texas woman's become the first American to die from swine flu. That in the Brownsville Herald this morning. State officials indicated that the 33-year-old woman had been suffering from some pre-existing health conditions and had recently given birth. USA Today with an exclusive interview with Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. After colleague Sandra Day O'Connor retired in 2006, she is the sole woman on the bench. She discusses the need to have more women appointed to the court. She said, women belong in all places where decisions are being made. On the front page of the New York Times, there is an economic analysis from writer David Leonhardt. He says the job report the Labor Department plans to release on Friday will provide a key indicator of where the economy is going. A simple path here, if job losses slow down, then that's an indication that a recovery may be following. Maybe not a quick recovery, but at least we're moving in that direction. We will be hearing a lot about the big banks and the government stress tests. One of the banks has not met the test, uh, according to the Wall Street Journal. Well, one of uh, several that have not met the test, but Bank of America is in the spotlight today. According to unnamed sources, the journal says B of A is about $35 billion short of the capital it should have to be considered healthy. Chanel is a doctrine from Long Island celebrating her 147th birthday in Manhattan today. That's 21 human years under her belt. She is a senior wiener, says the headline in the New York Post. The Guinness Book of World Records named Chanel the world's oldest dog last year after a 28-year-old beagle died. Also in the New York Post this morning, it was Madonna's fashion disaster. She showed up at a Monday night gala in an outfit the Post is describing as a cross between a medieval dominatrix and Bugs Bunny. And it wasn't cheap. The Post reckons it would carry a price tag of $8,800 if you were to put it together yourself. Finally, the reviews are in. The program is good. New York Daily News TV writer David Hinckley calls the Project Runway replacement a fast-paced winner. Uh, you know the story by now. Project Runway ran away itself to a competing channel. It'll be on Lifetime. So Bravo is trying to slide a similar program into the schedule to fill the hole. And Hinckley says the fashion show works. And thanks for joining me today. I'm Pat Kiernan. That's all the time we have for today. We have links to all of these stories on the main page at our website. Scroll down the page to find them at patspapers.com.